I really think being surrounded with nature has really helped me feel more connected and grounded to the place I am and in a way to the work I make. I have a very unstructured day in the sense that I don't have specific things planned. I, I can't work that way. If something's calling to me in a painting, I'll just jump to that painting and then maybe I'll get lost in the zone and start working on other paintings in a frantic, haphazard way. Or sometimes it's just having this one object where I'm so pleased with it, it's completed the painting. My name is Hujay. I'm a painter, artist. I was born in Nairobi. I've lived here my whole entire life. I grew up in a very Jain philosophy with like some influences from Hinduism. There was also this idea to treat everything with reverence, trying to treat everything with a certain respect and tread on ground very respectfully and softly. And I went to Savannah College of Art and Design. SCAD was really friendly and, and they offered me an academic scholarship, so that really helped in being able to attend. I'd initially gone to study graphic design, but I really fell in love with the painting department. At that time, I was really interested in abstraction and abstract movements, and Todd Schroeder was a professor who really helped to listen me up to other ways of painting and expression. I lived in New York for a year and I, I came back in 2014. I think at that time my work was a bit austere and grey and like lacking a lot of colour because um, I think we associate seriousness with greys and black and monochrome. So when I came back, it took a lot of adjusting, trials and tribulations, and I feel finally like my work is more connected to the place I'm in. Some of the objects come from my house, from my living room, from my grandma's room. A lot of them are Victorian furniture, Victorian objects, and they sort of um, hold these um, very British ideals of civility, civilization, and the animal sort of, what's happening to them is brutality and having those juxtapositions is very interesting to me. This painting sort of has the different life cycles of um, the man-eating lands of Savo. Uh, once they were killed, they lived on as rugs in Patterson's house. Then they were sold off to the Field Museum of Chicago, I think at the time for $5,000, and they were taxidermied, and they were living on as these really docile, playful, decrepit, almost like creatures. And I, I just shocked at how they were depicted. And so I thought, let me have like mood lighting, you know, very cozy sort of atmosphere. And I was thinking about early expedition is at that time as well, you know, uh, lots of binoculars. The crocodile was in essence a way to depict like the danger that these early expeditionists faced, but then um, to have a lamp shade over the crocodile was a way to disrespect it further. The chairs and the piano and the cabinets and the vases and the chandelier was a way to show high civility against this brutal nature of, of the animal skin rug. There's a lot of humor in the work, but there's also horror and I think color messes that dynamic up and I think it's a very interesting place to work from because color can't be defined and um, if you've ever read the book Chromophobia, it's a really good book and it tells about like how men and patriarchy and all these ideas want whiteness or like standardization and color kind of goes away from all these notions. 
it's also a way to set the mood for these uh, dioramas in a way that can help trivialize the scenes themselves or make them more immersive. One of my biggest influences was Tal R and he uses this extraordinary range of colors in a way that's just super loud and I remember really being drawn to that. It really upsets the visual balance, it really upsets the way you enter into a painting. It can trip you up, it can sidetrack you, it can lead you in specific ways and it just makes the work itself more complex. I'm super pleased when objects take on a life further than themselves. These teacups stacked up become this almost um, spinal cord of some animal. There's a lot of like bones and things as well in my work. There's like English style cabinets which respond to that idea of cabinets of curiosity. There's a lot of collecting of the natural world during that time. A lot of these things also put in museums for displays, for collections and they're like horrors in these cabinets. So some of the paintings I'd have would be like lion rugs coming out of a cabinet in sort of a surreal way. I was also thinking about museum dioramas as a way of how the world is depicted, how that way of like Western thought of having these um, museums depict like hierarchies and sort of like showing how other cultures in a sense were inferior. I wanted to use the museum dioramas as a way to set up these interiors to offer a way to depict things in a way that that gave me license to present a fictitious diorama and these absurdist sort of dioramas would shed a light on all these problems by having everything side by side. There's this weird sense of, yes, exotification to the outside world of Kenya. I think the luxury of safari was because of these objects, like you'd have many porters take all these things on a hunting expedition and um, it was just this very romanticized vision of Africa, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to play around with that. I feel like um, I'm giving the animals some agency, some retribution in a way. They become almost like portents of future catastrophes. There's a lot of role reversal. I'm super grateful to Circle for putting faith in me to show up their new space. I'm very honored to do that uh, and a bit nervous. Obviously the reaction, how, how people will see the work, I, I'm interested to know. This is a, also a big step for my career. I can announce my work to the art scene here in Nairobi, uh, which is super exciting. I'm hoping young painters can come see this exhibition and see that it can give them the license to paint the way in which they want and for other people to come see the exhibition and, and really think about things more in a way where what objects they're holding on to, how the world was depicted, how things are and, and sort of come to that understanding and hopefully it can move people